All right, we're here. It's a little bit of a different set. But when YouTube got into the live streaming space with YouTube gaming, Facebook was quick to follow. And Facebook was actually really aggressive in trying to capture the game streaming market. They signed high profile content creators like Disguised Toast. And here in Southeast Asia, Facebook gaming or FB.GG is really kind of the de facto platform for a lot of streamers out here. Most of them move from Twitch or YouTube onto Facebook gaming. And they've really seemingly been pretty successful at it. But what can Facebook offer you as a creator? Let's take a look at that today in the studio. So there's this monetization portal that you can go to. I've linked to it in the description. And you can find out if your page is eligible for monetization. If not, it'll tell you what you need to do. Now, there's this other program called the Level Up program, and this is targeted towards just gaming creators. So if you're not a gaming creator, use the other monetization program. But if you're a gaming creator, this has a different set of criteria and you can apply to this. And this monetization offers a bunch of different options. Of course, there's the in-stream ads, you know, the mid-roll ads that'll play over your stream. But also there's things that are more traditional like subscriptions and stars, which are basically like Twitch bits. But the important thing is, is that if you apply through the level up program, you can't pivot away from gaming. Your content has to be towards gaming. And I believe there's certain broadcast requirements that you need to meet when you join via this program. All right, so either you have monetization enabled or you're gonna start streaming and creating content so you can get monetization. Now, Facebook is notorious for changing their UI and UX every six months. So when you see this video, everything can be in a different place. But for now, you're gonna to wanna to go to the Creator Studio, click Go Live, and you're gonna be put in the Live Producer page. This is where you're gonna set up your stream for whatever page you select. Make sure you don't stream to the wrong page. Now this may look a bit different on your end because I have a Facebook business account, um, but things should mostly stay the same. So of course there's the usual set your stream title, you know, set a description. And you, if you're doing like a gaming stream, you can set the game that you're gonna stream. Uh, you can also geo target or geo restrict stuff and age restrict stuff so you can limit who can see your stream. You can do a test stream. So like if you're streaming in a new location, you can test your stream and you know see if the quality is good or maybe you just want to test Facebook streaming. You can also schedule a stream. So when you schedule a stream, it's going to create an event that's going to post on your page and you'll have a specific stream key. This is really good for all you event broadcasters. Also, you can set a thumbnail. So a thumbnail is really helpful because when you schedule the post, the thumbnail will appear on your page, letting people know what they're tuning in for. All right, so now let's talk about actually setting up your stream key and streaming to your page. So there's a couple things here. So you can either have a persistent stream key. This means the same key you stream to every single time. This is great. You're going to be streaming every single day like a normal gaming stream. Or you can set up a new key for each event. So if you set up a new key for each event, this is really great if you're gonna have someone else stream on your page and you don't wanna give them the main key. Or, you know, you just like it for safety reasons. You can also actually enable a backup stream. So a backup stream gives you a different RTMP URL and a different key. And you basically put this on a separate encoder. And if one encoder fails, it switches to the other one, the stream stays live. Finally, there's this option to automatically end a stream if it loses a feed. So basically, if you turn off the stream or you lose connection, the stream will end. Otherwise, if you don't have this enabled, you actually have to end the stream in Facebook. Otherwise, it'll still appear live. This is really good if you're gonna be in a place with maybe some shaky internet connections that might drop out. So you wanna enable this so that if it does drop out, you can go back live and stick with that same event. Otherwise, you're gonna spam your page with a bunch of different times going live and offline and live and offline. So you can also set your stream latency. So if you are playing something or streaming something that you know encourages real-time viewer interaction, maybe set a lower latency, but this will sacrifice some of the video quality. You can also enable rewind, or this is known as DVR in Facebook. So if someone jumps in your stream, they can jump back and kind of catch up on the action and go back to live. You can also set up 360 streaming. Uh, you can turn off the ability for people to message you on Messenger when they're watching your stream. This is really good for keeping your privacy. And you can actually change who can comment in your chat as well. So as I mentioned before, Facebook is prioritizing gaming streams on the platform. So you can see there's a special tab here with gaming related options. So you can see the standard stuff like changing the title or changing the game, seeing all your analytics like stars and donations and comments. 
But there's also some cool stuff to encourage interaction on the platform. So you can launch polls, you know, ask people questions, which way should you go in the dungeon? You can also set goals, like I want 10,000 followers and this will appear on the player. And finally, just like Twitch, you can create clips from your stream. So there's a couple other handy live streaming features that I found on Facebook. So one is this graphics feature. Facebook can actually create graphics for you. So it can be like a lower third or a starting soon screen or a little ticker. You configure these graphics, there's some templates, and then it'll give you a web source URL that you can just add into Expert Broadcaster as a web source. And another is the feature link feature. So basically you can add in a link in a little text description. This could be like to a donation website. It'll be in your player. So it's really good for fundraising and uh, sending people to pages that you know might help you promote something with your content. So how do you go live on Facebook with Expert Broadcaster? Well, like I said, you can use the custom RTMP and use the RTMP URL and the stream key, or you can actually just log into your Facebook account on XSplit. So in the broadcast section, you can set it up as an output, just log in, set the page. And there's this really handy, easy to use wizard. You set the quality level, select the page, just press start. But of course there's some more advanced features. You can actually stream to specific events that you might've set up on Facebook. It'll pull those from the API. But one really cool tip is to actually log into XSplit with your Facebook account. You can actually link it to your existing XSplit account when you do this. But when you log in with Facebook, it'll automatically add your Facebook broadcast output and then any widgets you use like the stars widget or comment display widget, they'll automatically be connected to your Facebook account. If you don't do this and you log in normally, then you have to log into each one of these sources and broadcast outputs on your own. So if you're going to be streaming to Facebook a lot. I highly recommend logging into XSplit using your Facebook account. So I will say Facebook is a really robust streaming platform, just like YouTube is. It's really great for event streamers. It gives them a lot of tools to schedule stuff and, you know, keep client privacy and security and basically share access through the other tools that Facebook has for managing pages. But it's also really great if you're a gaming streaming content creator, or if you're going to be streaming your gameplay, like there's a lot of tools for gaming streamers and there's a level up program that makes it easier for newer streamers to start monetizing their content and, you know, growing their viewer base on Facebook. There's even the FB.GG platform that's purely focused at promoting gaming streamers. But I wanted from you, have you ever considered Facebook as a option for live streaming? Have you ever live streamed on Facebook? Let me know in the comments, give a like if this video was helpful and share it as well. And be sure to subscribe for the next time we're in the studio.